Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol character spotlight and today we are taking a look at a character that was actually requested by one of you guys and uh, I was honestly a little surprised to realize that I hadn't actually done Agent Venom yet because I freaking love Agent Venom. I play him in, I mean, every Web Warrior roster I run and if I played Shield I would definitely be playing him there as well. So yeah, let's uh, let's break him down. Let's get into things here. So Agent Venom is coming in as a four threat with the Venom stat line of four two three. So he's got some obvious strengths and weaknesses right in the defensive line there. Uh, obviously, that two energy defense is not great, but the four physical is pretty solid. So you've got kind of some some give and take there, and then you know your Mystics just kind of about average there. He's got six stamina, which is pretty standard for a four threat. Um, with no, you know, nothing too crazy for the defensive tech there. He is probably a little bit on the squishier side, but it's not too, too bad having the, having the four physical, as long as you're careful with that, uh, energy defense there. He's a size two and a medium mover, so nothing really to write home about with either of those. But yeah, he's already got at least something to kind of distinguish him from some other models there. Also, very importantly, for, for the less comic-inclined fans, Agent Venom and Venom are not the same alias. This one is Flash Thompson in the suit, not Eddie Brock. So, uh, you can run him with, uh, with regular Venom if, uh, if, if you so desire. So, and that's pretty relevant because they do share an affiliation as well. Going into his attacks here, he has three different attacks on his card. Always love when they give you a few options, so nice to see there. The first one is Clintar Firepower. This is a five dice range for physical builder attacks. You're going to build power based on the damage that you deal. And it's got a wild bleed, so just a nice little extra thing to be throwing out there. Uh, not quite the same as regular Venoms, where it's a guaranteed bleed, but he's going from a little bit further distance there, so you got some give and take there. Next, he has the Incendiary Grenade. This is a one-cost spender, so a very, very cheap spender. This is a range 3, 5 dice energy attack. That says after this attack is resolved, the target character gains the Incinerate special condition. So you're always going to have the power to do this as long as, you know, you, you weren't poisoned or something like that. And, uh, yeah, you get to... Light someone on fire for, for guaranteed, no triggers, nothing like that. It's also just a solid energy attack if you are going up against maybe another Agent Venom, for example, and you just want to be able to hit them on their weak side. Uh, you have something like that to, uh, to help you do that, and it's relatively cheap, so it's not unrealistic, especially in the later rounds of the game. You can start a round with two power and just be able to double tap with this, so pretty solid there. It is a little bit closer range, so you gotta keep that in mind. You're gonna have to make sure you're, you're setting yourself up for that one, but um, yeah, great little bit of utility there, and obviously Incinerate is an amazing condition, so that's pretty solid. This third and final attack here is Symbiote Special Forces. This is a four cost spender, so we got a little bit more of a real spender here. It is a beam three seven dice spender, so already pretty solid. I mean, beam three with seven dice, you can hit a few models for that most likely. Uh, and then you got a wild hit lashing tendrils trigger after each attack is resolved. Deal one damage to each other enemy character within range two of this character. So you can totally get that multiple times and, and hit a bunch of characters for a bunch of damage. Uh, yeah, really, really solid trigger, especially if you have multiple targets in the original beam, so you can you can start to stack that up. So yeah, great way of throwing some extra damage out with this, and honestly, I just love this spender. It's it's really good, and it's done so much for me in so many games. So yeah, really, really solid thing there. Um, but yeah, that is it for his attack profile. Let's go ahead and move on to his superpowers. So the first superpower in our list here we are very familiar with from a few of our Web Warrior friends, and that is the Symbiote Web Swing. It's going to be a two-cost superpower that's going to place you within three of your current position. You can only use this once per turn. Unlike a lot of the Web Warriors, unfortunately, this doesn't add dice to his next attack, which would be kind of absurd since all of his attacks are a little bit further range than most of them, so probably a good thing that it doesn't, but still just an amazing mobility uh, power. I mean, it's not an action. You're going to place three, which is further than that medium move he would be doing otherwise. I think I might be mixing that up. They're comparable distances, but it's a really good amount of distance. And um, yeah, it's just super solid mobility power here. Whether you're using it to engage, get into the fight, or to get out of it, whether you're using it to line up a sweet beam or something like that, Tons of different ways uh, you can you can make use of that, and for only two power, it's really, really affordable too. So yeah, web swings are good. Um, need I say more? 
The next superpower here is Project Rebirth 2.0. This is a one cost that just says remove a special condition from this character. This is great. I mean, this is this is just a really solid um, superpower to have. I mean, you can't be staggered if you're lit on fire. You can always just get rid of it. Any other obnoxious conditions, stun or something like that? Yeah, how about no? Um, yeah, this is this is just great. Basically, you know, it's it's immunity conditions without having immunity conditions. So obviously, the the ones that are going to affect your defenses. Um, your opponent's still able to apply them and they're still going to be able to get at least a round of, or a turn of use out of them. But as soon as you can activate them, you can just get rid of them as long as you have the power to do that. So yeah, really, really solid there as well. So yeah, good, good first couple here. And then of course he also has all-star quarterback. This is a three cost superpower that says choose an interactive terrain feature or an enemy character, both of size three or less within range two and throw it small. The super can only used the used i i words good once per turn and um yeah i mean character or terrain throw that's always good to see size three so you got a little bit of uh you know you can you can take a good chunk of the characters in the game with that and of course you know throwing size three terrain can hit pretty hard as well so yeah just really really good again you can really take advantage of that web swing too to get in position to be able to do this um so yeah, that's just a great superpower and, and just kind of stacks on top of an already really, really solid kit that he has going for him here. So yeah, just fantastic. The next one here is Symbiotic Instincts, um, because even after the point in his arc where Flash Thompson has become a good guy and he's a superhero now and everything, um, he still needs to be able to beat up Peter Parker. So while the character is attacking, the defending character cannot modify its defense dice. Um, yeah, this is really, really solid when it's relevant. Like, if you're going up against Web Warrior models, um, this is amazing. This is one of the, one of the best things you can have for, for fighting those types of models. If you're going up against a list that doesn't use rerolls defensively very much, it's not so great, but I mean, it's always good to have it, right? It's, it's at the very least going to make your opponent think twice about some of the choices they're including in their list. They see an Agent Venom on the other side, and their five threat model is Amazing Spider-Man, who's really common these days because turns out having a safe grab is really powerful right now. Um, yeah, they're going to have to think twice about, uh, you know, A, if they're even playing him, and B, how, how to kind of keep him away from Agent Venom, because Agent Venom will just absolutely shred through him. He, he definitely doesn't feel like a five threat uh, when, uh, when he's being shot by, by someone like Agent Venom, so... Um, yeah, really, really good and, and definitely good right now where we're going to be seeing a lot of amazing Spider-Man running around. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of Namor who's also giving rerolls and stuff like that. So just being able to turn off that kind of stuff is, is going to be a big deal. So, um, yeah, super, super valuable, super power and, um, just really good right now. But of course you have to kind of keep in mind that, you know, that's not going to be relevant against every model against every team is so where it is relevant. It's great. Where it's not, like a lot of the lists that I play or rely more on things like damage reduction or counting blanks or something like that, doesn't really do much there. So uh, definitely just kind of keep in mind what kind of opponents, uh, what kind of models your opponent's throwing down and, and which ones you're having Agent Venom go after for, for maximum efficiency there. And of course, in true Web Warrior fashion, he does uh, just have the wall crawler superpower as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty solid. I mean, gives him even more mobility on top of that web swing. Um, just being able to, to kind of not care about buildings and stuff like that. So that's definitely valuable to have as well. And before we get into affiliations, we are going to talk briefly about his two tactics cards here. The first one is a team up card with Peter Parker. It can be any of the Peter Parkers and that is clean up. Uh, so it is an allied Agent Venom and an allied Peter Parker. May each spend one power to play this card during the power phase. So you do have to know what you're playing it at the beginning of the round. Agent Venom gains the Spider Sense superpower until the end of the round, which is super nice, giving him some defensive rerolls. Gives him just that little extra bit of defensive tech. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really nice to have. Definitely brings his defensive lineup from eh, kind of almost squishy for a 4 to, okay, that's actually pretty solid. Um, and then Peter Parker gains the Symbiotic Instincts superpower until the end of the round. So he's going to be gaining that ability to turn off rerolls on your opponent's, um, on your opponent's side. 
This is a really interesting card. Personally, I really like giving Spider Sense to Agent Venom on a turn where you know he's holding an objective or something like that, and, and you know your opponent's going to want to try and take him down, especially if he's got a good amount of power to be able to do some rude things if they don't. So I do really like it for that. I love giving Peter Symbiotic Instincts in the specific case where you are playing Web Warriors into Web Warriors, or if you're just playing into Web Warriors in general, or any reroll heavy team, but they're kind of the first one to, that I that I think of, because, you know, pretty much everyone there has some form of defensive reroll. Um, so being able to say Peter Parker is also, and, you know, a lot of the time this will be Amazing Spider-Man, um, is also going to be ignoring their main defensive tech is just absolutely massive and um now suddenly you've got two models that are doing that so i think if you're if you're playing web warriors which i mean you have a peter parker and an agent venom so you're you're a good chunk of the way there or if you're just splashing both of the models together or one of them and one of the other one's affiliations um this card is really really good specifically into web warriors i think outside of that you got to really analyze uh, what what types of models your opponents going to be bringing and whether you're going to get a lot of value out of the symbiotic instincts half of the card not sure if the card is quite worth it for the spider sense superpower alone on agent venom it's not that it's bad but it's more of a is it worth the card slot to get that and that's a little bit harder to say for sure but uh, i definitely think if you're playing against web warriors really really strong card and definitely worth considering all right so the other card is a another team up card and this one is also specifically a guardians of the galaxy card uh, and there is a lot of text on this card, so we're going we're gonna to kind of summarize this one. Of course, if you want to pause the screen and read the card, you are more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, so basically, Agent Venom is going to spend any amount of power to play this card, and for each two power spent, he's going to get to pick one of these options. And uh, what is it? One, two, yeah, it's five options. So if he's on ten power, he can do all five of these options. Um, but he does have to completely do one before he can move on to the next one. But they're kind of lined up in a way that you can actually like move between the characters to be able to benefit from all of them. Because all of them require being within range 2 of one of the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. So at, uh, I want to say, 19 threat, uh, you can run all five of those models plus Agent Venom. Um, I think that's that's how that works. Someone's welcome to check my math on that. But um yeah so the 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 perfect world scenario for this card you're running 19th right you're running that exact list and you're able to get every ability here um so i believe you you get to go in whatever order you want um so yeah we'll just kind of go through these real quick so if you're within two of gamora you get thrown medium um so that's that's solid whether you're using that to damage something else or or just to move around to one of the other ones uh or you know onto a point or whatever you're trying to do cool good, good 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 ability there um note that it doesn't give you the thing that most characters get when they throw themselves and they don't take damage so if you bump into something you are going to eat a damage for it you're going to have to keep that in mind uh if you're within two of a Groot you're going to heal up to three solid that's that's a good amount of healing uh if you're within two of a Star Lord you immediately get to make his spender attack without paying the power cost uh so that's a seven dice three cost spender that has wilds um giving out uh what's it called uh, a bunch of different conditions and things like that i'm doing words amazing today i swear guys um, but then after the attack is resolved you're going to get to advance small this is really cool because it's also stacking with your symbiotic instincts so um you know if you're again if you're into something like web warriors where they have a lot of defensive rerolls you can really take advantage of that here um but yeah then you get to advance small and then if you're within two of an allied rocket and you've already made an attack this activation note you don't even have to have made an action yet if you got Star Lords, because that is an attack. You immediately get to make an attack action. Um, this doesn't specify which one, so if you know if you've got enough power to throw your spender or something out, go for it. Um, so yeah, this is this is just great. Um, then you immediately advance small. So again, a great way of kind of moving from one to another. So far, the only one that doesn't move you is is Groot. So and of course he's going to be pretty close to Rocket anyway. So. You're probably able to get both of those if you're trying to. And then lastly, if you are within two of an allied Drax the Destroyer, you are thrown small and count as size three during this collision. So again, just great way of throwing a little bit of extra damage or just getting some extra mobility around for, for whatever reason you need that for. This card is a lot of fun. This is just a really cool, fun card. It encourages you to run the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, which is such a fun team. Um, and yeah, he pairs really, really well with them. I'm still waiting for the day I'm going to get the dream set up with this and just be able to run, you know, all five or even like three or four of the abilities 
uh, in a single turn and, and have it be be this huge impact. Is it, you know, the most competitively good card? I'm not sure. There's a lot of setup. It's very specific in what you need to have with you, but I do think it's a really fun card and it's not bad by any means. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's a really, really solid card. And if you're running Guardians anyways, you might as well throw it in there as long as you're not too, too strapped for your 10th card slot. Um, and, you know, just kind of decide on a per game basis, whether, whether, you know, is the movie Guardians the right team for this one? All right, well, let's let's make it happen um but yeah it, it's it's definitely a really fun card either way all right taking a look at affiliations we were just talking about the card for it so we might as well talk about guardians of the galaxy and i mean who doesn't like the guardians of the galaxy leadership uh, star lord's leadership is just so generically good and agent venom is definitely a model that that really appreciates those extra little bit of rerolls there he didn't have any dice fixing on his own kit so it's great to be able to give him some there whether you're using that offensively defensively it's all good um you know you get access to the card which as we already established super fun so so there's this uh, another reason to bring him right there and it does give you a little bit of a counter to those those models that are that are getting those rerolls because you know he's he's really good at doing that so um yeah great model to bring in those sorts of situations as well but yeah, outside of that, I don't really have many notes on him here. Um, I mean, before I would have mentioned something like Crew doesn't really do much for him because he removes his own conditions anyways, but that's not really a point anymore. And honestly, it was barely a point to begin with. So um, that that is a thing. Uh, obviously, he loves their their other uh, their other cards. Lobo Misfits is really, really solid with him. I mean, if he gets to make an attack, it's great. He's got good range, so he's able to do that usually. No building never hurts whether you're lining up a beam or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's the, the, that's a great card with them. Uh, and then of course, um, the, the extra die when, once you're on your injured side on everything is just really, really solid, which I'm just realizing I didn't mention whether he changes on his injured side, but that's because he doesn't. So it wasn't relevant. Um, but yeah, I usually do that. And the art looks sick on this side, man. I wish I could have got that for the thumbnail, uh, but unfortunately, usually I'm only able to get the front one. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, very solid affiliation. Surprise, surprise, Guardians are really, really good, and he is great there. I run him in pretty much every Guardians roster I build, and he hits the table quite often because he is really, really good, and he, he's great at playing that kind of skirmishy gun line that they're really, really good at doing. So, yeah, so super good model there. Very, very fun. All right, next up is Shield, and I'll be the first to admit this is the place where I have the least experience with Agent Venom. Um, just haven't played him a crazy amount here, but I will go over the leaderships here as best as I can and, uh, and, and what kind of value I think he gets out of it. So, I mean, first of all, Invincible Iron Man's the easy one. Rerolls, I mean, those are, those are just solid, and uh, if he likes the rerolls from Guardians, there's not much reason he wouldn't like them from Invincible Iron Man. The one uh, kind of, you know, big, big change there between that versus the ones in Guardians is that, of course, you have to pay power for the rerolls in, uh, in Iron Man's shield. Uh, which isn't great for him because he can be a little bit of a power-hungry model. I definitely find my Agent Venom very frequently bounces between having tons of power from, you know, either getting beat up or having a really good builder or two, to absolutely nothing because that spender is so good. <laughs> um, so uh, definitely one of those things where I'm finding him, he runs dry on power a lot and uh, not sure how often I'll be I'll be willing to spend it on rerolls myself. But um, that is just also a me thing of, of I'm not usually a huge fan of those types of leaderships. That said, Iron Man's also able to give him um, rerolls with Jarvis, and he definitely appreciates that. So that can be pretty solid as well. Um, if you want to play kind of the, the gun line as well, that shield does really, really well, whether that's, you know, either version of Iron Man, Nick Fury, Howling Commandos, all of that. Uh, he plays into that super well. I mean, I was talking about that kind of playstyle with him for Guardians, and he he does play into that really well. So yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, definitely a, a playstyle that that he suits and and works with quite well. Uh, and then you get into the Invaders leadership, and I mean the Invaders leadership is very similar to the Web Warriors leadership. So if it works for him there, it works for him here, right? Um, obviously the, the difference in, you know, what you do to, to get the skulls part of it is, is slightly different, but it's not that big of a difference for him because he doesn't have any other source of rerolls either. So like most of the time you have something you can reroll that's not a skull. Um, but even in the case where it was a big deal, 
Um, you know, with stuff like Web Swing, he's not he's not going to have a hard time being within two of an ally, because uh, I believe that's what the Invaders one is. Honestly, I've only put Invaders on the table once, and I haven't actually seen them played against me yet, so I don't have much experience with the Invaders leadership yet. But um, I, if I understand correctly, that's how it works, and yeah, I mean, that's that that's not hard for him to do, so um, that that's quite solid right there. But yeah, just in general, I think it's a I think it's a pretty solid place for him. I don't think they do anything too too crazy for him, but he he definitely kind of plays to their play style. And um, you know, again, same deal with Guardians. He kind of gives them that out into those more you know defensive modification teams. So always good to have there. And he's got a couple of his Web Warrior buddies here, anyways. So that's also you know it's it's kind of a cool if you want to dual affiliate, you've kind of got three models uh, crossed over right out the gate. So. That's always that's always good to see. Speaking of those crossover models, his last affiliation here is of course Web Warriors, and um, yeah, I mean he's great here. He's especially great if you're playing the mirror. He's just obnoxious. Um, I I feel like half of this video is just me saying if you're playing against Web Warriors, you should be running Agent Venom, and that's because if you're playing against Web Warriors, you should be running Agent Venom. He's amazing at fighting the Web Warriors, but he is also a really good Web Warrior. He does all of the things that the Web Warriors like doing. The biggest problem with him in Web Warriors is that he doesn't have those defensive uh, reroll abilities that a lot of the other ones have. So he's not stacking that with the leadership and getting all that extra value out of that, which is definitely a legitimate downside. Um, but as far as just you know being a uh, being a mobile mobile piece that can that can grab objectives, move around the board, throw enemy characters off of points and things like that, he's great. He gives them a little bit of an extra an extra little bit of punch if he needs to needs to kill stuff. Uh, with access to all webbed up, that symbiote special forces is brutal. Uh, nine dice beams hit like trucks, and then you add lashing tendrils into that, and it is. It is absurd. I I absolutely love it. I've gotten it off a few times, and it feels so good every time. Um, yeah, if you're playing for a little bit more of a brawly webs, you know, they still play the objective game. That is still the webs game plan. He's almost an auto-include there. Um, but even when you're not in that situation, he's just a really, really solid model. He gives you... He gives you, you know, a piece that can play the fighty game pretty well, but he's still he can still run around and, and do the other Web Warrior things. So... Yeah, just very, very solid model here. No no real complaints. Um, benefits from Miles' leadership in the sense that it gives him some defensive tech, which definitely helps because we already kind of established that he is probably a little on the squishier side for a four threat. Um, so, so that works really well with him. And then, of course, you do get access to cleanup as well, uh, where where you have uh, three Peter Parker options to, to choose from. But... Um, yeah, I think I think most of the time it's probably either amazing or or spectacular. You you really only have two, um, but yeah, that is that is a thing. Uh, you can also do you know one of my favorite teams, which is the fluffy fluffy all all venom team. Um, I got to run that once and it was really really fun. Not very good, but really really fun. Of just like uh, venom, Gwenom, Agent Venom, and I think I had Amazing Spider Man and I venomized him. It was fantastic. Um, not something I recommend trying for a tournament, but really, really fun for casual. Um, but yeah, he's, he's just great. He, he works really well here. He's amazing in that mirror match and, um, he, he does the thing they're trying to do, but he kind of gives you that cool pivot if you need it. So, um, definitely think he's worth including in, in the 10, uh, whether or not he's going to see the table every game because he isn't quite as defensive as a lot of the other ones are. Um, you know, that, that's a different question, but still really, really solid model for sure. Looking at other affiliations he can be in, um, there's there's a couple that kind of stand out to me, and the main the main thing I'm looking for when I'm splashing Agent Venom, uh, there's kind of two things. He's got all the mobility he wants, um, so so he doesn't need that. You know, he's not going to benefit too much from say a Midnight Suns or something like that. Um, what what he's looking for is a a little bit more power, because like I said, he can be very very power hungry. Um, specifically, one thing I really like with him is things that help you generate power more. Because I, I find a lot of the time he's one of those models that he can start out with a bunch of power and I still want him to have more and I, and I want him to be able to get it back. It almost makes me lean towards something like a Red Skull 1. I haven't tried it myself, but it's something that I think would be really, really interesting with him is, is a Red Skull 1 there um, where I, I don't think his thing is once per turn, right? The the leadership here, yeah, no, it's not. So, um, you know, it's something like that, that spender where, where you can line up a beam and maybe get a bunch of power back from it. Uh, I think could be really, really interesting for him. So something like that would be interesting. 
Uh, the other thing, of course, with, with power leaderships you're looking for is the ability to enable him to do things like his web swing more often. Um, you know, if you want to do it turn one, of course, Steve is, is probably the place to go. Um, so, so something like a Steve Vengers agent venom could be, could be really, really rude. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of, that's kind of the main thing I'm looking for with him. And then the other thing, of course, just being dice mods and, and dice consistency. Uh, and again, I, I kind of shy away from ones where he's going to have to spend power for it. You know, like your, your shield and your Wakanda or, or specifically your, um, Black Panther Wakanda. But if you go towards some of the other ones that, that give you a little bit of extra, a, a little bit of extra oomph without having to sacrifice power, uh, something like an M'Baku or even a Killmonger leadership where, where you get that herb and you can, you can do some extra things with that or just use it to, you know, eat it and gain some power at the end of the round. Um, something like that could be really interesting. Criminal Syndicate, similar idea. You've also got access to that throw, so you can kind of play the Kingpin objective game if you need to as well, if you're, if you're running dual leader or something like that. Um, but I was more so thinking MODOK for the, for the dice mods there. So you have a few kind of options for, for dice mod leaderships that, that are pretty solid with them, um, that, that I definitely like the idea of running him in those. Personally, I haven't splashed him a crazy amount because, um, one of the things that I think he is best as a splash for is if you do have a lot of, and I know I've said this for 50 times now, but if you do have a lot of web warriors in your local scene, um, being able to kind of bring him as a, like, okay, I'm expecting to see web warriors at this tournament. I'm going to have him in my list just for a, Hey, I saw them on the other side of the table. Here he is. And I think that's actually one of his best use cases. It doesn't really matter what affiliation you're playing. If you don't have an answer to those types of models, those, those, that type of defensive tech. Um, I think he, he is an excellent, uh, answer to that type of defensive tech. He's mostly self-sufficient. He really appreciates some of those leaderships that'll, that'll help him, uh, kind of keep going. But, um, you know, if he doesn't have that, it's not the end of the world for him. So if you, if you do see a lot of, a lot of those, or even just, you know, again, the, as that meta call of like right now, amazing Spider-Man is seeing a lot of play. If you're expecting to see a lot of Amazing Spider-Mans at an event, he is worth including because he will do rude things to an Amazing Spider-Man. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely worth um, worth just kind of keeping him around as as a counter to either the affiliation or just the the kind of subset of those models that are that are potentially really really rude. So. Yeah, he's he's really really strong in those situations, and I think that's kind of the best places to be to be splashing him. Really, are just the places where you're expecting to run into the things that he's good against. And obviously, that that kind of sounds like it should be obvious, but um, I I think I'm just poorly articulating it. Um, but yeah, he's he's a very good piece at answering those sorts of situations. And even if you know you bring him. And then your opponent chooses not to put ASM on the table. He's not going to feel bad most games, especially if you did combine him with a leadership that does benefit him. You know, something where he's going to be getting those swings and those throws and the spenders more often. Or when he does them, they're going to be more impactful because you have rerolls or something like that. Um, if you're if you're able to combine him with that extra that extra little bit, um, he he can feel really really good. You know, I would be hesitant to to put him somewhere where I don't think he's going to get as much value out of it. Uh, you know, something like. Uh, original Thor Asgard, for example, not a big fan of him there. He doesn't care that much about the condition removal. He kind of does it himself anyways. Um, so, so you don't care too much for that. Uh, similar, similar vein, Winter Guard. Um, and then of course, like the mobility ones, you know, Midnight Suns, he doesn't care too much. Um, so you're, you're going to have to kind of keep that in mind is like, if you're putting him there as, as a meta answer, cool that's great that's you know hopefully hopefully he does well but don't expect him to do anything too special outside of that uh because while he is a great model he's you know he, he's not going he, he's not the next beta ray i don't think um he's he's certainly strong um but he's not going to just kind of come in and just mvp half your game sort of deal um but still excellent excellent model he he can play so many different games very very well because he he is just super versatile and and yeah, he's just all around a really, really strong model. But yeah, I think that is going to do it for this character spotlight. We ran a little long here because I do really like this model, so I had a lot to say on him. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think, where you guys have had the most success with Mr. Flash Thompson here. 
Um, personally, like I said, I've mostly played him in his affiliated homes, and he feels amazing in those, but I, I definitely believe he is very splashable, again, especially if you're, your local scene sees a lot of the things that he's good into, so... Uh, very curious to hear what what kind of what kind of places you guys have seen that success with him, because um, yeah, I, I I would like to I would like to confirm that uh, that belief that that he is a really solid splash, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of all I got for this one though. So once more, let me know what you guys thought down below. But that's gonna do it for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do uh, more discussion focused content like this during the weekdays. And then we also have battle reports on the weekends. So if you're a fan of any of that sort of thing, feel free to jump on in. But that's gonna do it for this one. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Peace.